This is kind of a hard concept, but uh, uh, it is in some ways and not in others. But sacrificing the desires of our flesh is what leads to our greatest joy. But it's really hard to see in the moment. And for example, when I had my addiction to food, in order for me to be set free, I had to come to this place where I was willing to become obese. My fear is that if I gave up um, self-control and discipline and all these things that I thought were necessary to keep me from like just becoming obese, um, I had to give that up and risk the fulfillment of my fear which would be becoming obese, which in my mind would make me unlovable. Um, I had to risk that happening in order to have God actually change my heart. I had to let go of control so that God could come in and change my heart and set me free. And that is hard to do. It's hard to see in the moment that actually sacrificing the desires of our flesh to be in control, to do it on our own independently. Um, It could be, that could be the desire or the desire could be, uh, in my case, to not become obese. (laughs) Um, Or, or it could be to, you know, if we're, if we're still enjoying our sin, whatever that might be, whether it's indulging in alcohol, sex, food, I mean, anything, right? Um, But so it's hard to see in the moment that actually sacrificing that will lead to our greatest joy. Um, But I can tell you that it's true from my own experience. And so I've been taking this course on C.S. Lewis through Hillsdale College. And one of the things that he was commenting on was how our joy coexists with the need for sacrifice and in this way. And and so to choose life, we actually need to choose death of our old familiar selves. And we can't do it on our own. We need to get to the end of ourselves and call out to God for help. We have to abandon our own human hopes of self-improvement and self-control to actually enter in the kingdom of God. And uh, in some ways, when I heard that, I was thinking of the parable that Jesus tells where the guy comes in to the wedding feast not wearing the proper clothing. And ordinarily, this parable is interpreted as the proper clothing being Jesus, which is true. I believe. And and also, I was thinking it could also represent us trying to do it in our own strength, with our own self-improvement, our own self-control, our own self-discipline, like just trying to do it on our own rather than abandoning the hope of us being able to do it on our own and actually receiving that from God through Jesus yeah, getting his help with actually being able to um, to walk in his ways. And so uh, for the sake of conversation, I, I'm going to be using kingdom of God, meaning like I, I believe that we are meant to actually bring the kingdom of God here. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God being at hand. So I think we can experience it now. And also it's going to be after our physical death and But C.S. Lewis uses the term heaven, which I would interpret as just after we die. So anyway, for conversation's sake. So he was saying that even in heaven, we will still be continually dying to self and needing to submit our wills to his. And in this way, there will be pain in heaven, which I thought was fascinating. I've never heard that before, but it makes a lot of sense to me that even in heaven, we're going to still be, I mean, I personally believe that we will still have free will in heaven. I don't see any evidence for that not being the case. And with free will, I do believe that we are going to consistently need to be submitting that 
to him. And that's actually something that God communicated to me, not so much after we died, but just generally. A year and a half ago, I was really angry with him for allowing all this evil and corruption and was like, you know, kind of, why are you allowing all this? And and he stopped me. I was like, no, no, I'm not allowing it. You are. And then he started showing me how he's given us humanity the responsibility to reign on earth and to bring his kingdom here and actually rule in the way that he would rule. And um, so it's actually our fault for allowing all the evil and corruption. And within that, he started showing me how he does not tolerate evil. We tolerate evil. He does not tolerate evil. And I was, I mean, that's basically what makes heaven heaven, right? Is that no evil is tolerated. (laughs) And I was rejoicing in that until I realized that I wasn't welcome because I still mess up. And so he, he communicated to me that repentance is key. So like, what do we do when we mess up? Do like, do we get defensive and stick, stick our heels in the ground and, um, or, or do we repent and turn back to him and decide, okay, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to walk in God's ways. And so I think what, uh, C.S. Lewis was saying about in heaven, how we'll still continually be dying to ourselves and needing to submit our wills to God's and that there's pain in heaven in this way. I think it's similar to what he was what God was communicating to me in terms of even within the kingdom of God, even within heaven, we're still going to need to be in a place of repentance, have a heart posture of repentance and of submitting our wills to his and of um yeah, releasing our fleshly desires. And so um, C.S. Lewis talks about how tragedy is something that he defines as being unavoidable. So he talks about hell is not actually a tragedy because hell is avoidable. From C.S. Lewis's perspective, hell is like a door that's locked from the inside. So it's us not allowing God in, basically. Um, And we can come out at any time. And what that requires is us being willing to give up our fleshly desires and actually be willing to let God do surgery on us to take out the cancerous things that we think are good uh, because they might feel good in the moment or whatever. Like, yeah, just the cancer from our bodies, from our souls, (laughs) from our spirits, from us. Um... So C.S. Lewis says that the tragedy is what is truly unavoidable is the pain involved in sanctification. So there is this dying to self, which there's grief involved in that when, when we die to self, when we let go of these things that we're holding on to that we don't want to let go of and actually release it to him and allow him to set us free, to remove those things. There, there's a certain amount of pain and grief in that. And um, C.S. Lewis reminds us that the resurrection doesn't take away the pain and the reality of the crucifixion. Like crucifixion had to happen before the resurrection. And for us, it's the same. We'd like, we need to die in order to actually have life. We need to be willing to give up our fleshly ways our sinful ways in order to experience life and God's ways. And so uh, I forget which book it was of C.S. Lewis's, but um, I think it might have been the screw tape letters where it's basically saying that in heaven, we will actually embrace the pain that is required to remove the, basically the desires of our flesh. So those are some of the things that, I found interesting from the C.S. Lewis course, um, this part of it anyway, and that I could relate to in my own life. So I hope, hope that was interesting, helpful reflection. I don't know. You can leave your comments on if you agree, disagree. Um, 